Ladies and gentlemen, Primetime CP23 here with a, another Diablo 3 build video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the uh, Legacy of Nightmares Bombardment Crusader as well as the Akan, uh, the Akan variant of the build. They're going to play extremely similar but there are some pretty key differences. Okay, so the big thing about the Legacy of Nightmares build is obviously that it is a Legacy of Nightmares build. Because of that, you are looking to only have ancient gear. Currently, I have all ancient gear except for my amulet, which is a Hellfire amulet. Uh, currently I have the finery passive on it. Um, the most important parts of this build, as far as the gear goes, are the helm. You have to have an Ancient Leoric's crown. This one is not rolled very well. Um, but that's beside the point. You have to have an Aquila Cures, ideally Ancient. It doesn't matter what the roll on your Aquila QRS is, uh, on the legendary Aphex, I mean, because you're always going to be at 100% primary resource, so it doesn't really matter what you roll. Um, you have to have a Belt of the Trove. Uh, I was very lucky, and my first Belt of the Trove this season was Ancient. But Belt of the Trove is the most important part of the build, and you need to be running it even if it's not Ancient, uh, because it's going to cast a bombardment every six to eight seconds obviously six seconds is the best um, pants it doesn't really matter I'm using an immortal kings uh, set pants which is actually for the barbarian uh, I rolled it over to be thorns damage uh, currently I'm using the boots of disregard which is a, a bounty item. You get those from running bounties. Uh, boots are not terribly important. You could run these or anything like ice climbers. Uh, I don't even know of any other particularly good examples right now just because it's the boots are not terribly important to the roll. These I just happen to roll them primal so I figured I'd go with it. Uh, shoulders Again, not terribly important. Uh, the quote meta build of this, or meta version of this build, uh, probably uses uh, the invoker shoulders. I just found some ancient shoulders rolled to strength. I made sure that they had cooldown on them, and I rolled bombardment damage onto them. Uh, for your gloves, you're going to want to use St. Archu's Gage so that you uh, get an Absorb Shield to 125% of your max life for 10 seconds the first time an Elite damages you. I'm, I'm currently using a Blade of the Prophecy, which makes uh, Condemn trigger its own explosion on two enemies that are condemned. I didn't word that very well, but you can read it. It's two condemned enemies also trigger condemned's explosion. Not super necessary. Uh, I would say that actually you'd be better off uh, with an ancient mortal drama and then a... Let me see where it is. Bear with me here. Um, okay, I can't find it, but uh, I'm actually using it in the second build that we're going to take a look at here. Uh, but ideally you'd be using the Mortal Drama and... Let me look at what the other one is called real quick. It's 
Swift Mount. Swift Mount doubles the duration of your Steve Charge. And the Mortal Drama doubles the number of Bombardment Impacts. I guess I can leave it up just like this. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be the exact same skills, which we'll go over in a minute. Uh, currently, I'm using Defender of West March on both builds. I have Nemesis Bracers on both builds. These are actually rolled to Dexterity, so this is not even ideal. Um, and then, of course, you're going to be using your Legacy of Nightmares set. Ideally, you'd have both of those ancient. Increases the damage against enemies. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading Bane of the Trapped instead of the Legacy Nightmares rings. Uh, so as long as your only set bonus is the Legacy of Nightmares bonus, every ancient item you have equipped increases your damage dealt by 100% and decreases your damage taken by 4%. So I've got 12 legendary items equipped, so my damage is increased by 1200%. My damage is also reduced by... Uh, 40, 36%? I don't know, I'm not so great at math. <laughs> now I guess it would be 48%. Uh, and like I said, ideally you'd have a ancient amulet also. So then when you switch over to look at the uh, the death Death's Breath farming build, which is the uh, a con set build you're actually going to be using two to three sets it's mandatory that you have the six piece bonus from the armor of a con set and the three piece bonus of the sages journey set now i did not actually make this build up uh, i saw this on a video by zero cool who i will link his video in the description below uh, the tag on this video was 1,000 Death's Breaths per hour. I've never actually gotten quite that high, but it's still a very fun build. Uh, it's you. It plays exactly the same, only uh, you're using the your damage comes when you are in a con form or accurate's champion, your super form, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's when you deal your damage because you're gonna reduce your cooldowns while Accurate's Champion is active. You're gonna reduce the cooldown of Accurate's Champion by 50%, and while it's active, you deal 600% increased damage. And you take 15% less damage. So this build is weaker than the Legacy of Nightmares build no question but it's also going to farm a lot more efficient efficiently uh, it's actually using the exact same items in the cube well not the exact same items it's still using the mortal drama to double the number of bombardment impacts and a heart of iron to gain 300 percent of your vitality as thorns so i've got uh, almost 5,000 vitality and i'm going to get 300% of that as thorns. I'm also using a Ring of Royal Grandeur with the Akan build, with the Legacy of Nightmares build, I have a Convention of Elements in the cube instead. Let's go over your gems really quick. You want to have a Bane of the Trapped, an esoteric alteration to reduce your damage, and most importantly, a Boyarski's chip to add a whole crap load of thorns damage. Mine is only a rank 54, but it's almost 60,000 thorns. My current thorns damage is 22 or 229,000, which is good. It's not great. Ideally, it would be even higher. But it's not bad for the Legacy of Nightmares build. For the Akan set, my Thorns does drop considerably to 188,000, but it doesn't really matter. In this build, the differences are you're using a, instead of the Legacy of Nightmares, you're using a Stone of Jordan, 
and a unity and you're using the exact same legendary gems the talisman of a con the amulet is very important for this build if you do not have it it doesn't work and real quick we will run a rift we'll go ahead and run a rift with the death's breath farming version because it's more fun uh, ideally you're going to want to have about 50 percent cdr with either build in order to minimize that 90 percent or that 90 second cooldown on accurate's champion uh, at 42 percent cdr on the akan build I maintain pretty low downtime between Accurate's champion. Uh, but anyway, so going in to the rift, we're going to have 64 death's breaths. Oh, I left this as a public game. That's my mistake. I don't know why those guys were not actually in the rift. So as soon as you see an, an enemy, or an elite rather, you want to pop Accurate's Champion. If there's a crap ton of density, you want to pop Accurate's Champion. Uh, generally, that's the, I mean, that's your damage dealer, is Accurate's Champion. And I just realized I forgot to go over the skills. So that's fun. We'll go over that after this rift. It's very important on either build to always make sure that before you actively cast Bombardment that you hit Iron Skin because with Iron Skin you're going to be uh, you're going to be increasing your Thorns damage. So it just does even more damage if you have Iron Skin active when you when you hit the uh, bombardment. Almost died there. All because I wasn't paying attention and I walked into an explosion. I apologize about the scatterbrained nature of this video. But this is kind of... Uh, kind of last second. I had intended to only talk about this build, and then I thought, well, I may as well talk about the Legacy of Nightmares build while I was doing the video anyway. So you can see how quickly we're running through this rift, and... There have been a few elite packs that were not damaged by anyone other than me, and they still went down extremely quickly. There's actually three packs right here. Four packs. There were four packs right there together. Okay, so let's see here. Got all those cleaned up, I believe. Now we'll go ahead and try and find another pack. Okay. 
And the Guardian's on me. So when Accurate's Champion is down, or when everything is on cooldown, you just kind of have to run away. It makes you a little vulnerable, um, but you are using a cheat death passive, plus there's a built-in cheat death passive on, on Accurate's Champion, so you still won't really die that often. At least on T10. Oh, I'm on T9. Oops. Anyway, you look at it. Uh, doesn't really take very long. So for skills, we're using Iron Skin with the Reflective Skin Rune to boost our Thorns damage. Bombardment with Barrel of Spikes. You're going to call in an assault from afar, raining barrels of spikes onto your enemies, dealing damage increased by your thorns. So Bombardment is going to deal 2,850% of your total weapon damage to enemies within 12 yards of impact zone. And that damage is increased by 200% of your thorns damage. Well, my thorns damage is up towards 200,000. So that's pretty crazy damage. I'm using Consecration with the Bed of Nails rune, Steed Charge with the Spiked Barding rune, so that it will, so that your horse will damage uh, enemies that you hit with it with 500% of your thorns damage. I'm gonna be using Condemn Vacuum, which is gonna suck up enemies, kind of group enemies together, and then there's an explosion after three seconds, and Accurate's Champion with the Prophet Rune. Uh, you're gonna basically deal a crap ton of extra damage, and the first time you take Fatal Damage with Accurate's Champion active, you're returned to full health. I believe Accurate's Champion pops before the uh, Cheat Death passive pops up. Uh, so you are going to be running Indestructible, which is your Cheat Death passive, Fervor, because you are wielding a one-handed weapon, Iron Maiden to increase your thorns by 50%, and the Lord Commander perk. Uh, to reduce the cooldown of Steed Charge and Bombardment. Like I said, you're going to be using the exact same skills on on both the Legacy of Nightmares build and the Akan build. Builds are very similar. Personally, I have more fun with the Akan build. Uh, we gained a little over 30 Death's Breaths in a T9 Rift. So, I mean, it's very efficient. You can build up death Breaths very quickly, uh, especially on T10. T10 is about as high as I can go with this, efficiently anyway. Uh, but I suppose it would be possible to go even higher. So, uh, just to make it clear... With the Akan build, we are using Swift Mount as our weapon, and Defender of West March as our shield. Ideally, instead of those, you would be using the Norvald's Fervor set, which I would be using with this build if I had the uh, Flail. I do not have the Flail of the Charge yet. I have several shields, as you can see. What this is going to do is it's going to increase the duration of Steed Charge by 2 seconds. In addition, killing an enemy reduces the cooldown of Steed Charge by 1 second. You're also going to gain 100% increased damage while in Steed Charge and for 5 seconds after it. That's basically a 100% of the time, 100% damage boost. So that's ridiculous. That is so helpful. 
So, that's that, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it for this build. Uh, I did end up rolling a wizard this season, and I have the full uh, the full lightning wizard mantled heal build. If you would like to see that build, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, this is Primetime CP23, and I'm out.